no one else could work in that studio. They put locks on the doors, high security. Um, you have to have no codes. When you go in, all your electronics has to be off. And we use our electronics. I use my iPad for information when I'm doing that stuff. Because I, if I'm playing an oil rigger, I don't know anything about oil rigging, but I've done the research. And so I gotta look at my iPad when I'm doing a call out, you know, you know, make sure you put that four four inch bit on there, you know, whatever it might be some type of program. I gotta have my iPad. And then now you can't have it, you gotta turn it off because they're afraid we're gonna film their film, you know, and then release it on the YouTube. I just had a uh, sculpture for uh, two of the recent Marvel movies and uh, we did Guardian of the Galaxy Two and uh, Guardian of the Red Columbia. He was the head sculptor for Marvel in Atlanta. He lives in San Diego. So. Uh huh. <laughs> They're like, here's my card. Give me a call if you need it. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's become a, a pretty crazy world when it comes to that. You know, I, I've gone. You know, I've done big voice things. You know, huge yeah, games, so whatever. Yeah. And I said, what game is this? You know? And the guy, I, I'll never forget. It was pretty funny. This is Skip, I can't tell you. You know, I can't, but you know, this is a great game. I really want to know what it is. He picks up, he, they have these huge binders, huge. They're, they're this thick with all the different loops we're doing in this thing, page after page. The title of the movie was on the back of the binder, and it was so funny. He picked it up with Skip, I can't tell you. And he's holding the binder with the title right there. I wish I could, but I can't. And it's like, oh, I got it. You know, it's pretty funny. Um, but uh, I unfortunately don't get to do as much anime as I used to just because I'm doing more live action nowadays. We do a lot of live action looping. Uh, ADR, where we're putting all the background voices in, where I'm sweetening voices, uh, matching voices. Uh, I'm working on a show right now. We're finishing up called. Uh, Zoe's, Zoe's uh, Extraordinary Adventure, I think. And I will tell you, it's a fantastic show. Uh, it's, you can stream the first episode, and it's all about this young girl in a uh, software company, and she can kind of feel what you're going through uh, as she's talking to you, and then a musical goes off in her mind about what you're going through. So if you've just broken up with your boyfriend or girlfriend. So it's extraordinary playlist. Yes, that's it. Did you see it? I saw it on Facebook, yeah. Yeah, so. that's it. It is really good. I don't really care for shows like that too much. This one I really like. Uh, it's They're really talented, it's really fun. And uh, we go in and we're doing all the looping on that show. And uh, so I don't get to do much anime like I used to. I did just finish a thing called uh, uh, Killer, what was it, Killer 7? Killer 7, which I think is like we call Itchy 7. I think they changed it. It's a Chinese anime. Uh, there's Chinese anime now, and of course there's Korean anime now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you know a site where I can go look for Chinese anime? Uh, I don't offhand. Um, I know this particular, this you mean to watch it? Yeah. This particular thing uh, is the second season, and it's Netflix. Okay, I have Netflix. Yeah, so you can watch it on Netflix. And called you, Itchy 7? It's, I think they changed it to Itchy 7. The original title was Killer 7. Okay. And it's pretty whacked. Uh, it is just out there. Uh, I've never done anything quite like it. It's just so crazy. It's a lot of fun, uh, but boy, does it move fast. Uh, it's just... Is it a sub or dub? Not that it matters to me, but just... Well, I was, of course, working on the dub. Okay. Um, and I, I don't know if they have subtitles or not. They have those on Netflix. I'm guessing it's all dub. Yeah, because uh, Attack on Titan was sub when it was on Netflix. Uh huh. Yeah, I think it just depends on what Netflix gets, you know, and what they order. And this is one they ordered, you know, because they're getting so much more into the anime world. Uh, this is one that they ordered, you know, and they own it. They own it. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's supposed to start in the next month or so, the second episode. But you can watch the first season of it. Um, yeah, on Netflix. And it, you know, I bet you if you put in Chinese anime in the Netflix search, okay. you'll come up with their you know, Chinese, huh? A couple of pages. Yeah, I would think. Uh, or South Korea. Yeah. All right, let's see what Steven said. Casting Call Club was what I started out in when I was looking for more amateur stuff. 
but I've been using Voices.com Voices and also Twitter following indie game developers when they send out casting calls. I'm going to my panel. Appreciates. You guys get that? Let's see, let's see what Voices.com looks like. I know there's also some um, gigs on Mandy.com. On what? It's a, it's a subscription job site. Uh -huh. uh, Mandy.com also has some um, uh, voice acting calls. And the other casting sites that I know of are uh, Backstage. Backstage has some voice acting. So like Backstage West, the paper? Yeah, but they have a website now. Yeah, right. Well, this says, I'm looking at uh, Voices.com, and it looks like this, and it looks like you just sign up for it. Sign up in seconds, post your job for free, access the world's best professional voice actors. So I imagine uh, as a voice actor, you go on and either put something on there, or you look for the jobs that are people looking for. So there you go. And I think that's probably, and all of you here can do that. Um, and like I said, I mean, I wish I could, I, I think next year I'm going to actually try to do a panel where I'm just setting something up to teach you voice acting. Because um, it's just, give you guys copy. Um, it's what that voice work was last night. It was it? Yeah. And they had some copy or you could read whatever you wanted. Uh -huh. But you had a minute. Mm -hmm. And then they had a, they chose eight, eight plus four backup people for the thing they're doing tonight at eight o'clock. It's a tournament style voice acting. Oh, I see. Gotcha. It's a competition. <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. Voice Horseman? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I think I found that show. Well, they still are so mad that they changed the name to Scissor 7? Scissor 7, not Itchy 7. Scissor 7. Scissor 7, thank you. Shows how much I pay attention <laughs> when no, I go no, to a job. Is it Tessie You know, I, I, I literally, on this, I, I tell you, on this job, I went in the studio and I got my phone and I'm, I'm writing stuff as I see it on the screen. Because I, I didn't know the title of it. So I saw the killer set of the And then I'll, I'll, show, I'll tell you my notes that I took when I'm in between takes. Um, because I didn't know who I was playing. And let's see where I put it. Uh, killer Seven. And I wrote down every time I, see you later. Every time I put, did another character, I did a ninja pirate. I did a fight announcer. I did an old storyteller, I did a ninja warrior, I did assassin, and I did man one. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, and I just wanted to keep track of that because I had no idea, you know, who I was playing. And I had auditioned for something totally different. And in this particular case, uh, the director was French, and I couldn't understand him uh, <laughs> very well. And so I was just kind of nodding, oh, okay, I don't know what he wants, you know. And because I asked him, what voice do you want me to use? And he was, just come up with something. <laughs> okay. And most, like I said the other day, most of my voices, my voice is gone right now, but most of my voices are everything down here. You know, it's our, you know. And this, they wanted something, we have me here! You know, and it's just like, oh, that's going to hurt. And it did. Uh, but it was crazy. You know, except for the announcer. The announcer, they wanted back down. In this corner! You know, that type of thing. Let's get the Yes, that's exactly what they wanted. Michael Buffer. There's a couple of chickens that were fighting, uh, which is what the anime is about. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, anything else? Uh, how do you? What usually guides your voice acting process? Like, what do they give you? Um, character descriptions yeah. or things like that? Um, when, especially when you don't know what's happening hey, in the anime. Me, like, could you go through that process of telling us how that's like? Yeah. Let me show you something. Never uh, thought about doing this. I'll show you exactly what it looks like when my agent sends me something without showing you too much where I get in trouble. Who uh, else well, signed NDAs? That's okay. Uh -huh. So, okay, this is the email that I get, and it, it basically it just says, you know, attach me to material for Love and Death and Robots. It's a video piece. 
And, I've seen that already. Huh? I've seen that already. Yeah. And this one was, uh, this particular one was, um, they wanted me to do a, a live, uh, not just a voice, they wanted a live uh, audition, just with my phone. I could just film myself because they wanted to do the motion capture thing. And so then what happens is I get these, I get an attachment, and I pop the attachment up. And let's see here. Holding, holding, and it looks like this. It's just a script. And in the script, it will say uh, what the character looks like or what they're, what they're thinking. Or they'll send me a whole different spec um, this guy was a sheriff, and uh, he was burly and kind of worn and been at it for a while. And then you have all your lines, uh, which they kind of circled, so I would get confused, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> and um, it goes all the way down to the end. And you do two takes. I never do more than two takes. Sometimes these guys do three takes. I usually do two, and a lot of times just one. Um, and then I send that off. Now the process, as far as the character goes, and getting there, it just depends on, like, um, uh, I think the best example that I've used before is Guy Sensei. Because Guy Sensei from Naruto, he started off as just, I didn't know what to do. They just said, you know, I looked at him, I looked at what he was doing, I listened to the Japanese, and I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't really help me a whole lot. Um, <laughs> But then I just, I started creating some voices. I, I used a little Elvis, uh, and the little John Wayne, and the little Charlton Heston, those three characters. And that developed into this guy that talks like this. And he just got this clip going on. And at the beginning, if you listen to the beginning of it, he's even got a little bit more roll in his, you know. How's everybody doing? It's a little more of that Elvis, <clears throat> which we eventually lost and got rid of. But for the entry, when he all of a sudden comes out of this turtle in a puff of smoke, his first line is, hey, how's everybody doing? You know, and that just seemed right, this Elvis sound. And they loved it, and that's what we went with. And then that just slowly but surely got developed into a little bit more of the clip, you know, gosh, you know, that type of thing, uh, that talk. So it just depends. Um, I do a live show. And I, the character that I play in the live show is this bumbling detective. And I developed him from a couple of characters that I saw on television that I really liked. And I just kind of used a little bit of their stuff and then mixed it with somebody else. And then, in fact, I got to see this guy. This guy, you guys, are you familiar with the show, the TV show MASH? There was a character on there, he was this undercover, his name was Colonel Flag. Colonel Flag, Flag yeah. yes. And his CIA name, operative, yes. badass, breaks his own arm at one point. Wow. Yes, and he was played by a, a wonderful actor by the name of Ed Winter. And I patterned my character after that. That gave me the, the cadence of where I wanted to be with this guy. And I got to meet him one day on an audition, and I went up to him, and he had kind of, kind of dropped out pretty, a lot, wasn't doing much. But I went into him, I just wanted to tell you what a fan I am. And that I'm actually doing this character, I've been doing it for years, and I patterned him off of your wonderful work, you know. And he was just really joyful uh, and earnest about it. You know, he was so happy that, that somebody did that, you know. But I did. And that's how you do it. And, you know, you guys should be looking at and listening to people all the time. Especially when you hear a voice that's like, that's kind of peculiar. And remember it. Because it's like, I'm going to use that voice one day. Days. I'm going to use that somewhere, you know, uh, if it, whether it be somebody that's you know, got a little bit of a lift going on or whatever, you know, use it, you know, if it's got somebody that's got something, you know, every once in a while, his voice pops, you know, use it, you know, you'll find a place for it eventually, and that's where you build up, and then don't allow yourself to get stuck into one thing, allow it to grow, and, you know, go out from this spot to the way over here, I was doing a play one time, and I was playing a, a gay character, and the director and the writers were gay, and I was playing it so affected, you know, way out there. And the director came over and says, are you gonna play him that way? <laughs> and I said, no, trust me, I'm not. But if I don't go there, I'll never get here. 
I got to go to this extreme to get where we want him to be. Because I mean, I was just, whoa, you know, just out there, you know. And, and there's this guy that is gay and goes, you know, we're not like that. I said, I know that. But there are some that are, and that's where I want to go to get to where I want to be. And that's the same thing you guys need to do with your voice work if you decide to do that. Go crazy with it and then pull yourself back, you know, until you find that place where, oh yeah, that's where I need to be. That's comfortable. Yeah. Make sense? So what is the toned down version look like after you go from there to, to where you want to be? Of the character, like that character? Yeah. Oh, he was, he just had, he was a little affected, but not very much. He's just a little bit lighter, you know, and he was much more sincere, you know. It was, that's where I was with him, you know, because that's where he was, you know. But he wasn't like, you know, it wasn't that. But that's where I was going with him. And it was so funny because I remember this kid, this young kid, came in, and he came in late in the process of rehearsals, and he thought I was gay and hitting on him. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not. It's all good. Don't worry. You know, he was like, is he hitting on me? No. He's, because that's kind of what the play was, you know? And I said, no, he's not. You know, the director was like, you're good. He's fine. He's just, he's just, he's just crazy. He's just like wacky, you know? I've already talked to him, you know? Uh, but yeah, it just, it came way, way down. It's the same, like I said, with Guy. You know, Guy came way down compared to where he was at one point, you know? And it's the same play, you know, where I, I might start off a, a character who's just, you know, yelling and screaming all the time, and then by the time we're done with him, he's down in here, he, he makes it much more internal, you know. Um, and there are those times when they are yelling and screaming. It's not all to be internalized. Sometimes it is just loud, you know. Um, I've played plenty of drill sergeants in games that are loud. They're loud and abrasive and in your face, you know, and they're very difficult to do and to hold on to before you lose your voice. Anybody else? Good to see you again. Me, me too. <laughs> um, I'm trying to, what else I could tell you guys that would be interesting, but I just don't find myself all that interesting. Um, um, how has things changed? Uh, I know this is supposed to be when the camera goes off. But when the camera goes off, we're just usually leaving. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or when the microphone is off. Yeah, usually when the microphone is off, we're going I'm to I'm just yeah, saying goodbye. <laughs> yeah, or we're going to go to lunch. You know, because you know normally our sessions are only two hours. Uh, they don't usually do more than two hours. And back in the day, we did four-hour sessions, so we would go to lunch uh, together, uh, which was awesome. Uh, but most of the sessions now are two hours, and I, I have a tendency to move relatively fast uh, when I'm looping or when I'm doing anything. So they're always, you know, they're usually looking for more stuff to do, or it's I'm out in an hour, hour and a half, you know, we're done, moving on. And we cut up a lot. I, like I was telling the group the other day, I play the ukulele uh, a lot, and I usually bring my ukulele, and uh, we usually do a song or two in the booth. And, uh, I did a uh, song one time with Mary Elizabeth. You guys know who Mary Elizabeth Wynn is? Uh, she's wonderful, good friend. And she'd always like, Skip, you got your with you? I said, I do, you want to do something? And we actually ended up doing, uh, it was Christmas time, and it's on YouTube. And we sent it out to the troops, and it's I'll Be Home for Christmas. And uh, we just, we were doing Naruto. And uh, it, we ended early and said, let's do something, send it out to the troops. Christmas, and we did, and it's on uh, YouTube. So that's the kind of stuff we do, or we talk bad about uh, the, the guy that was in there before us, you know, what was he doing, you know? Uh, I'm just kidding about that. <laughs> it used to be, it's funny, now all the scripts are on iPads. It used to be they were all on script paper, and guys would just doodle all over them. So you knew who you were following because they had these really Rude, rude pictures and uh, <laughs> writings, and I'm like, oh my god, did he leave that for me? What a douche, you know? <laughs> uh, and, and we do that to each other all the time, you know, uh, knowing who was going to come in next, or knowing who was coming in, we'd always leave a little note on something, you know, uh, don't worry about it, I already did this line for you much better than you'll ever do, so <laughs> <laughs> they got it. Uh, we do that kind of stuff all the time. Any specific funny pranks that you can recall uh, with you know fellow voice actors or uh, uh, 
uh, we sent you guys, you know, record separately. There's some people that like, we're, we're a funny line, knowing that the next thing that's going to follow is just going to be hilarious. Yeah, I think one of my favorite, and they kept it, which was really wonderful, and they and I actually have it somewhere. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. Uh, we were doing a, a game, and it was called uh, uh, Ace Combat something. It's a flying game. Yeah, and I did I did a few of them. And okay, and I did a few of them. And uh, we're we're it's you know it's serious. You're fighting, you know whatever. And I, I think it went something like this. It was like. Uh, all right, boys, let's bring it home. And then I started singing, up in the air, Junior Birdman, and they kept it. And so when I would come in the booth, they would play that. And we're, we're flying these jets. All right, boys, good. And I wish I, my voice wasn't gone. But it was like, you know, all right, boys, good job. Well done. Let's get her home. And then there's this pause. Up in the air, Junior Birdman, and it was just, it was just great. It was awesome. And they played it every time I came into the studio. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, uh, and then they played for, you know, when people would come in, you know, uh, here's what you got to match, you know. Uh, the other one was, uh, my favorite, and we've talked about it several times, is from Armitage days uh, when Kiefer Sutherland took over. They did a movie and they brought nothing. They thought it would be cool to bring in a star. And my first line of the the first line I did, I said rather than say, you know, we gotta go. I said, Kiefer Sutherland, because I knew how bitter I was that I lost the lead role <laughs> to Kiefer Sutherland, and that became a huge joke for the rest. I mean, till today, even you know. And this was 25, 30 years ago, and even to today, if you guys ever go into a Les Claypool um, deal, you have to at some point. You just have to ask a question. You just like, yeah, I have a question for you. Kiefer Sutherland, and just do it, just like that, and he will die. He will die. <laughs> uh, that has just been a big gag from the day one. Uh, we were just talking about it this morning at breakfast, as a matter of fact. So you know, there's little bits like that. You know, with with uh, Naruto, there were always a moment here, a moment there where. It was just these things to where you see this picture and you go, how am I, how can I not say something rude here? And you know, whether it would be with Rock Lee or Ten Ten or Kikashi, and you just, just for fun, you just go off. And you don't tell them you're gonna do it. You just do it. And they're, you know, they're listening, you know, and doing their dials and everything, and all of a sudden, well, Rock Lee, you've been looking at me and I've been looking at you. And you Handsome is up for it. Yeah, it just goes on from there. And they're up there, what is he doing? You know, and, and then we stop and you know, we just have a big laugh, you know. It's my favorite part about what I do for a living is laughing. We laugh so much. And that's kind of like where you get your best work is when you learn to laugh and have a good time and not take it so serious. Uh, I've worked with some very serious people and I said, dude, you gotta lighten up, man. Uh, you gotta have a better time. Because you just don't get a better performance. Uh, the same way with you guys starting out. Learn how to breathe and just don't worry about it. Don't care about it. That's probably some of the best advice I give people is breathe and don't care about it. If you care about it, it will show in your work. Uh, you got to throw it away. You got I don't care if I get this or not, you know, but I, I'm going to have a good time doing it. And that's it, you know. Uh, and you will book something, I, I guarantee you. Get on this thing I just gave you and try it. I'd, I'd love at some point to hear back. I hope I run into you again and you can say, hey, you know, I went on to that and I actually did something. You know, I think that would be the coolest thing. And all of you can do that. You know, And you never know where it's going to lead to. And that's the biggest thing. And that's how this business works. You work for this guy, you do something. That guy tells this guy or that guy gets another job. And then he comes in and says, yeah, I, uh, I want you to do this as well. That's how I started with Kevin Seymour. Kevin, you know, was the guy that I started with, and he said, you know, I want you to do this, and then he'd call me, hey, Tanaka has something else he wants you to do. Hey, so-and-so has this, you know, if you want to do this. And it wasn't even auditioning a lot of times, it was just doing it. You know, that's a pretty cool thing. So, good luck to all of you guys. You know, any other things before we leave? How much do you make? How much do I make? That's a good question. It is. It depends on It depends on what the job is. 
In anime, uh, the, the way anime works is that the dubbing rate is, I don't remember what it is now, it's, the dubbing rate is $72 an hour with a two hour minimum. You don't make a lot in the anime. Where you make up for it is like something let's say Naruto. They tasked, I think we probably did over the years, a dozen games. The games you make it seven hundred and fifty, eight hundred dollars a day to do the game for four hours. Uh, that's the game rate, you know. Now, the the problem with all of that is there's no residuals. Residuals are where actors really make their money. In, in the other end of this business that I do, in the looping end of it, the ADR work, I get residuals. So every time that reruns, I get paid again, and that's how you earn a living, a uh, good living. And that, that end of the job, depending on the job, can make anywhere from, uh, on the low budget stuff, you know, $300 for the day to a dollar, I think the minimum is $1,005 for the day, uh, which you make again when it reruns, you know, or a movie, uh, you get a percentage uh, when the, as the movies go out and sell, not from the theater, but when it gets on television or sells DVD or streams, whatever. Uh, you get a piece of that, and the piece is bigger depending on the cast. It's so, <clears throat> they're so, it's so involved that it's hard to explain, and they have a way of hiding a lot of money, and so I did, I worked on the original Twilight, which was at that time this huge explosion of a movie. It's just huge, and the checks just weren't coming in like they should, and she was, well, we didn't make this and that. Well, yeah, you did. Uh, but that's just what happens, you know. I had the same friend who's worked on uh, the Titanic and never made a dime off of it. So Hollywood is a good way of hiding. You know, so. But that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. You know? And then you have, you know, good years, bad years. You have uh, you're flying along, and it's just the, it's the nature of the business. You're just working, working, working. And then all of a sudden your phone stops ringing, you know, and it's like, what happened? You know? And it's just. The business kind of cycles, you know. Um, I keep very busy. I'm very fortunate. I keep busy with the ADR work, which is what I'd rather do anyway, because um, there's just so much content out there today, so much stuff. You know, I think Apple did 30, 30 when they first started, they did 30 scripted series right out of the shoot. They bought, paid for 30 scripted series in their first year. That's huge. And out of those, they've already picked up probably half of them for a second season. We get three of those, and one of my, I do have to do a quick commercial on because you guys are gonna love it. You guys will love it. If you're gamers, you'll love it. Uh, it's from the people from uh, Sunny in Philadelphia, and it's all, it's called Vision Quest. Goodness, what it's called, Vision Quest, and it takes place in a gaming company, and it is hysterical, hysterical. Uh, is it an office comic? Is it an office like the genre? Yes, yeah, it is. Uh, it is, it's exactly, it, but it's in a gaming company. And you have these battles of uh, the the people in charge and the creative people trying I've to- I've seen a for it already. Oh my gosh, it is, it's, it's one of the funniest- I'm the boss and then not- Yes, mm -hmm. it's one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. And the guy has this huge ego puts himself in the game, is the hero, and... They're doing motion capture. Yes. yes that's all they have. Oh my gosh, you guys will love it. If you were gamers, or even anime, you know, it's just, it hits it right on the head. It just really does. I hope you guys, it's on Apple TV. I hope you guys watch it, because I think you'll really enjoy it. Well listen, uh, you guys want ribbons? Yes. I got ribbons.
telling you at this point uh, with ribbons, it's, it's not just something you guys do, it's a cult. Yeah. I was going to say culture, but... No, it's just cult. <laughs> robes and everything. The robes are made in the ribbons. Yeah, the there was a couple of those last year. <laughs> Well, somebody was telling me that, like, during uh, over there at the convention center, somebody had ribbons to the point where it hung off the like second floor balcony. I'm I like, did that last year. That's, that's wow. very much the thing, like a challenge people try to do nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> I did that last year. Mine went down three quarters of the way and get all the way to the bottom. Wow. It was pretty huge. My ribbons today, if I have three times as much that I haven't put on yet, I'm gonna put on later and then go have them sewed because I can't keep track of them and I step on them and break them. And so I just thought I would wait and. Um, But I love it. I, you know, and then I end up at some point. I give mine away. My row. I gave the last time I gave it to a little girl at Christmas time that had never been to a con. I heard about it, so I sent them to her with some other stuff, and um, it's it's fun. She loved it. All right. Here is a Street Fighter ribbon. A guy sensei ribbon. And a, um, a vicious ribbon. Thanks, man. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cowboy Bebop. Mm -hmm. Let me check on. Did you? Yeah. You know, we were I, talking earlier about seeing something on the big screen, yeah. and I got to see Cowboy Bebop on the big screen. The movie? The movie. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I got to actually see the episodes. Oh, well. okay. Wow. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, I got to see him at a, uh, a thing they were doing for us, and that was awesome. And just just with the sound system alone, mm -hmm. just to hear the sounds, yeah, and, the, you know, when there's a jazz. quiet scene and you hear, or just that drip of water in the church, you know, it's just like, oh, that show was so far ahead of its time. Now people are trying to copy it. What are your opinions on the live action? I, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, I hope it's great. You they know? could screw it up big time or it could be a hit. That's right. Um, That's the way it is with just about everything. You know, I'm not, like a, a, I'm not a huge fan of, of taking an anime and going to live action for the most part. Well, I feel like that one, like, at the base of it, is, like, the one that could easily be done as live action. Yeah. Because that one, like, sure. Oh, absolutely. And stuff. Like, it's a little out there, but not so much so that it's going to be all CGI. <laughs> right. Well, the thing is, uh, I know uh, it's going to be a while, you know, before it comes out. Well, yeah, because the guy who's supposed to play Spike had some kind of accident. Yeah, he got hurt pretty good. I was at Universal not long ago, and ran into a guy that's doing posts on it, and he said they are down for a while. And I mean, down, they're not shooting anything else, they're just done. Well, that blows. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking it'd be awesome if they brought in you guys, like, just even as background characters, just make a quick cameo. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it would be, like, just the, the main crew of the animated series was just hanging around at a table, just having drinks. That would be crazy. Like, you could be one of the that old guys. <laughs> that would be One of the fun. three old guys? Just pass those back. Yeah, that needs to be a thing, indefinitely. Yeah. You know, back in the day, we had Mafia. <laughs> One of those syndicate mafia guys. I did. I worked on uh, Lady of the Tramps not long ago. The live action. The live action. I haven't watched it yet. Before. I thought it was going to be really bad. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's pretty good. It's pretty okay. good. Okay. It's pretty good. They did a good job of like CG CG dog. Yeah, but it's really it's done really well. They use both CG and real dogs. That's so right. It's a little odd when the dogs are like acting dogs, but they're not talking. So because they like you'll you'll see the difference. Okay. But it's interesting. It's we pass that back here. Yeah, I, I was I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it was good. It was funny. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, I, I thought it was pretty good. You know, we had a lot of fun doing it. You know, uh, we got to do quite a bit on it. Well, entertainment is definitely getting up there. Like, there's not many things that are new and come out that I can't at least get through. Like, I watch it, I'm like, 
that sounds pretty good. Just the quality of things are just really out there. Yeah. Did you pass these back to her? Did you get yours? Yeah, I passed the back to her. Oh, you those are yours. Okay, great. You have yours, I'm gonna give you two more. All right, good. You have your ribbon. You have your ribbon. Yes. Yeah. You get them all, right? I got them all, yeah. Okay. I'm signed, but I will eventually. I mean, I'll be with you in the honor. So. Yeah, we'll find me. I do. You guys fill it. Tell me what you want me to talk about. Outside of anime, what are some of like maybe favorite movies you're watching right now or anything? What's on your net? Well, I just watched Jojo Rabbit. Have you seen Jojo oh, Rabbit? Yeah. I want to. Oh. It's only one of the best movies I think you'll ever see. Call it Johansson. Did you see it? You can make Hitler funny. When you can make Hitler funny. <laughs> Yeah. We were talking the other day about it, and it, it's such a funny thing because uh, the director, uh, Dick Thor, huh? Dick Thor. Yeah, he uh, he gave an interview and he said, "Yeah, it was really, I couldn't find anybody to play Hitler, <laughs> and, uh, so I played it myself." And part of that is because he said, "You know, you call the agencies, and the agency calls the actor and says, okay, now hear me out here. Yeah. The part is Hitler. No, <laughs> you know, I'm not playing Hitler." But he said, no, you know, nobody wanted to play it. And it is brilliant. It's just, the premise of it is brilliant. It's, it's one of my favorite films that I've seen in a long time. I saw Joker, I love Joker. I thought Joker was missing a few things, you know, um, but I loved his performance. But then when I saw him on the Golden Globes, I'm going, well, what performance? He was just being himself, he's a nut. Um, but, uh, yeah, I saw that yesterday. But um, that was really great. And I saw an old movie uh, over the holidays called Sing Street. Sing Street. Have you seen that? I used to work at a movie theater, so. Oh, you did? That was wonderful. Uh, I had no like idea about it. Huh? Uh, uh, Irish. Irish, right. Yeah, same guy that did once. If you've not seen it once. Uh, and it's the same premise, it's a little younger. But I would, I would recommend that to all you guys to see Sing Street, it's really terrific. Um, I get a lot of the screeners for the Screen Actors Guild Awards, so I, I get to see it for free, which is nice. Uh, but those are, I think, oh, I'm trying to, I tried to sit through something else. Oh, what was it, uh, the Scorsese thing? Irishman. Yes, the Irishman. That didn't work out for me so well. You know, I, I started watching with a group of people, there was eight of us. The first half hour dropped to four of us. Uh, after an hour, it was down to two of us. An hour and a half, I was still there, and I was the only one there. And I was like, all right, I'm done too, because it just, it just didn't work. Um, the CGI and it, it, it just, you got this movie that looks more like a game, you know, bad CGI game, you know, and I just wasn't playing it. Um, it was it not a live action? Yeah. yeah. But, but you expect to come on and start blasting people away. Well, you know, it's what it was is it, it was live action, but they they, they use CGI to, to younger them up, you know. So they wanted to make the narrow as if he was forty, and it just it looked like a game, you know. How you get that game look to it, especially if you're watching on a high def TV. It's just like well, this is not working, you know. And then. They had a long shot of him beating up a guy like they did back in uh, uh, Casino. Yes, and that was the other one too. Uh, the Ray Liotta. Uh, Goodfellas. Yes, Goodfellas. Yes. Where they're doing that, you know, that bar kick that they do. They have a, whole, a shot of De Niro doing that. But it's like, that doesn't work. A 70 year old guy doing that, you know, doesn't work. I, I, I'm not buying it. So I probably do that film. Uh, I did watch one other one. I can't remember what it was. But yeah, there's some good stuff out there. Television-wise, um, I was just saying, Mr. In Between, I just finished that. I loved it. Uh, not seeing that as an FX show, and it's fantastic. Yeah. It's so good. Um, there's another show that I just finished watching. Another show I watched that I really enjoyed. I, like I said, you know, I have to usually binge them because I don't have time to watch them when I'm supposed to watch them. So I just want to have a night or not have to get up to six or five or whatever you're at work. I stay up late watching TV. Hey, thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for coming out. And I really, I sincerely, you know, I'll probably, be, I, this is the only convention I do, I'll probably be back next year. And I really, hopefully, I will run into you and say, hey, 
I went on that voice thing and I actually got a gig. I, I would love that. That would be so great. We're going to have some work somehow. Yes, you know? somehow. I would love to hear that. You know, It's uh, not like we aren't in a town that makes video games and other that's stuff. That's right. Thank you for next year for a meetup. <laughs> I'm, going, meet I'm going to have a panel next year where I'm going to bring some scripts and we're going to, we're going to do something. I'm going, to, I'm going to think that out because it would be fun. Uh, or you know, or, or set it up. Bring, bring, in, bring in a sound engineer to do the thing with the flaps. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. You know, um, where you guys have to actually hit it. Bang Zoom does that at uh, AX and one other uh, LA Comic Con. Yeah. So they just, they just bring or it. even uh, I think it would be a, a good panel would be setting up your home uh, studio. Got it. And bring you know to show you what you exactly need and what you don't need. You know, that would be kind of cool. Maybe I'll do that. So. Well, so you can do that tomorrow. Just grab your seven That's four. right. I could. <laughs> I could. I, I absolutely could. You know. Uh, and then have you guys record an audition and hear what it sounds like and show you how to cut it. That would be kind of cool. Well, have a good rest of the day and uh, hope we'll see you around. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the time. I love the fact that my cousin got back to us.